Hey everybody, welcome to the Chris and Bomb Show. We're so glad that you tuned in and uh, thanks for being here. We're here live at the KW Studios here at Kingsley Woods Church of Christ and we're thankful that people joined in. How are you today, Chris? I'm good. You know, we spent a half hour last time trying to figure out a name for it. It looks like Noah Jones wins. <laughs> just call go, it Noah. the Chris and Bob Show or Bob and Chris. That's right. We're just two guys that uh, love the Lord and we love y'all. And we're just so thankful to be able to be here and to tune in with y'all. So today we're going to talk about how to study your Bible. Yeah, so, you know, Bob, I think that... Um, Sometimes, I don't know if you get this question, but, you know, uh, so many times when I study my Bible, I almost, almost like, has that verse always been there? Like, the, like you just want to check and see if, like, if it's a new page or something. Like, right. how did that get there? You yeah. know, like, how it did just I... jumps out at yeah, you. Yeah, how did I miss that before? Right. And, you know, I think that, um, so I get people, like, I had a sweet sister message me Sunday, and, um with the same sentiment like this verse you know I've never seen this before it just stood out to me you know which was something that we were studying on Sunday and you know so I, I thought that you know I've had this kind of you know question framed many times in many ways and you know everybody's got their own kind of way that they ask it but really like how do I study my Bible and get everything that I want out of it because really what we're talking about is it, it reminds me of a, of a story and years ago, when I was in... Um, Story time, ladies and gentlemen. This will not be charged to you. Go ahead. Exactly. But please send your donations. <laughs> the, um, the, I was in Honduras years ago, and there was a new brother in the church. And Brother Oscar, uh, it was in Dan Lee. Do you remember? Did you meet Oscar? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Oscar, he pulled me aside, and he was like, Chris, he's like, I got a problem. I was like... Okay, <laughs> like is this a weird one. You never you know, know what you're gonna get. <laughs> right, 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 right. And so he's like, I I do okay if I gotta like say a prayer or something, but I really struggle with it when it's my time to do the Lord's Supper. I said, so just kind of a cultural understanding, they make a little bit more of a of a you know like we're off and on pretty quick with it you know as far as right. the guy doing the lord's supper yeah whereas they do it a little extended it's, yeah it's a little bit more pronounced mm -hmm. you know or protracted i reckon you know and so you know i was like uh, so what's the problem he's like i just get so nervous you know when i stand up and and in front of people and uh, he said do you have any pointers you could you could give me and i said um well sure he said what what what? And I said I got one man. This will this will nail it for you. He's like, all right. What is it? What is it then? Like, tell, give it to me. And I was like, write it down. And he looked at me and he said, can I write it down? And I said, God wrote it down for you, didn't he? And right. so you know you, you think about that. Wrote it from, down for Moses. Yeah, I mean for the children of Israel. You remember when mm -hmm. they were going to go into the promised land? Like they were going to plaster a mountainside, right, or parge, whatever words you want to use, and they were going to write the whole law on the side of the mountain, right, so that that they could always have access to what God wanted them to do. It wasn't mm -hmm. just like a, a you know throughout the the dark ages or the middle ages, depending on which historical perspective you want to look at it. You know, the Catholic Church nailed. So if you wanted to if you wanted to learn the Bible, you had to go to the Catholic Church. You had to read Latin because the Bible was you know translated into Latin and kept that way for umpteen generations. And you had to stand there at the pulpit and read the Bible. So that was that was you had to go to the church building. You had to read Latin and you had to stand there at the pulpit and read it. Well, yeah, we take it for granted. Yeah, we do. We have this right here. Yeah, or, or or digital and and yeah. and every I mean you know there was a point in time in America where it was it was there were so many different uh, resources or, or or organizations is what I'm trying to think of that were sending out Bibles that everybody had a, literally everybody had a Bible in their home and that's just not the case anymore but 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 back to what I was saying is that you know there was this time when there was a a lock, so to speak, on on the Bible, mm -hmm. you know, with regards to people's access to knowledge, and you know that was never God's plan. That's right, Amen. You know that the 
essentially, you know, God always wanted us to be able to understand what we wanted, what He wanted us to do, and understand that it's logical, right? It's not just some foolish, simple. and it's simple. And everybody everywhere can do it. There's not a command that everybody everywhere cannot do. And so, you know, then, all right, now me. How does little old me take this book, right? This big old book that I've got, and divide it up and use it, right? Because there's just it's sometimes it's it's intimidating, and so right. I get people that that ask me so many times, and like I said in different ways, how do I how do I study my Bible? Is essentially the question they're asking me, and so I thought we could take some time today to really just just focus on some of those things. Sure, and so the when I was a teenager one of the first things that somebody taught me how to do was to um, ring a grinding wheel and the reason why you have to ring a grinding wheel is because you know a grinding wheel is just put together with silica sand and a polymer and yeah. it's spinning at an exponential force you know the, the force multiplier on it you know as it spins up it's just it's trying to tear it apart centrifugal force is trying to tear it apart well you know so you have to have a binding agent that's stronger than centrifugal force and that's what they use to bind that sand together so you might be able to walk up to a grinding wheel and it look perfectly normal but it's a crack all the way through it and when you turn it on as soon as it reaches past the point of what's holding it together that may be halfway cracked right mm -hmm. but once you reach past the point that the, the polymer can't hold it together anymore it's coming apart so one of the things that I was taught was how to ring a grinding wheel so you can tap a grinding wheel and it's got a certain sound if it's cracked or if it's whole solid and so you whether or not you could see it or not you still trust the way it sounds and so Ultimately, in, in studying our Bible, what we're doing is, you know, like 2 Timothy 2.15, right? Yeah, you know, study to show yourself to prove. Study to show yourself to prove. Now, the reason why we quote that so much is because it lends itself to the idea of what we're trying to achieve, study, right? Mm -hmm. But that's really, you know, most all translations, modern translations, don't say that. Right. You know, they'll say something like, give diligence. Mm-hmm. And, and giving all diligence yeah right. and and the reason why is because it's really <clears throat> akin to when I was a boy my, you know all my cousins we lived around each other there and so we all you know this time of the year well it feels like this time of the year mm -hmm. in summertime it feels right. like summertime to me a little warm down here in Mississippi yeah at right, right and so the we would be at my granny's house because it was kind of like the central location and so we'd ask granny like hey think we can go down here and fish or you think we can go there and she said well let me study on it a little bit yeah. and what that meant was she was going to consider the options consider the outcome and make a decision based on it so when we kind of apply that verse from the King James perspective we apply it from the the turning my pages right and, and that's true mm -hmm. that there's there's validity in that but there's a way there's a way that we should approach the study of the Bible. You know, I, I see oftentimes people, for example, they'll say, I'm going to read through my Bible. Yeah. That's never that's never worked for me. I mean, just personally. Like, I know, like, Courtney, she's on this, uh, she got challenged on a 40-day reading challenge, uh, you know, through her KW uh, Families page and um, on, a, on Facebook. And so she's trying to, you know, she's been diligent about reading through the New Testament, you know, the 40-day challenge. And, uh, and so me, like, I'll start reading a verse, and then I'll look at this word, and then it's like it all changes for me. I go, I go searching out that word. How many times this year? So, you know, for reading for me has not ever been good, but studying for me has. And, and, and you know, that's the thing is that so somebody will, will pick up and they'll read, you know, the first, you know, the first six chapters of the you know, Genesis 1 through 3 are pretty exciting reading, right? Yeah. Then a couple chapters is genealogies, and people kind of like, you know, thumb through that a little bit. Right. And, and then then they get to 6, and we're building this great big old ark, right? Then it's interesting again. And then, so for a couple chapters, it's interesting. And then, you know, it, it, so there's these ebbs and flows, right? right, right? right. Mm -hmm. and, and so what happens is, is that especially when they get to like 
first and second kings or first and second chronicles when when like you get to david's order of the priest you know you ain't got to get that far you just get to deuteronomy when it's all monotonous it's going yeah over genealogies and, and right. so what happens is is people fall off the wagon That's with right. it because mm-hmm. all of a sudden they can't see the value in it yeah right and and so we, we got to remember that just for example from a study of the old testament that's jewish history mm-hmm. i mean that's jewish history so a lot of those things while every bit of it romans 15 and verse 4 yeah whatsoever things are written before time are written for what our learning the way through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope right yeah, yeah so there's all kinds of tremendous blessings in learning the the man Jew- i'm glad you picked one i could quote yeah i know it we didn't practice this beforehand no all this is unscripted but scriptural so. the the but the the thing of it is is that so all those things that happen you know all those genealogies and things like that there's benefit in them yeah right absolutely but somebody that's just digging in right they really struggle with that that's right mm-hmm. because they don't know yeah so what's some things that, that you would uh, that you would tell somebody like how how would you how would you try to approach it first so, of all so interestingly what I think is something that's interesting to do with it is you take so you can do two things. Two, two things that are real easy to do. You know, with with the, the idea of um, everybody used to have a concordance. Mm-hmm. And and if you don't have one, you've certainly got access to one on your phone. Right. And so, you know, you can pick, like what, what Aiden will do is he will pick a word, right? And he will study a word. So he'll pick, and you know what he always picks? Like sword or... Yeah. Scorpion, or I guess me and Aiden are a lot alike. <laughs> Boy words, right? Yeah, you right. know, you know he doesn't pick princess and things like that because if not, him and I have to have another kind of Bible uh, study. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so, you know, the, there's there's a real benefit. In example, you take the word patience. Mm-hmm. You sit down and you study the word patience and see how many different ways the word patience is used yeah and, and what you're getting with the word patience is you're starting to see a different perspective of it because when we approach a word study for example patience there's no doubt about that it's going to be seasoned in our mind because we understanding a literal definition of it when i study the obs with people and you've seen this with me when i study them one of the things that we do is we go through some of the historical uh, religious figures and they'll they'll say you know can the words of these people give you eternal life martin luther joseph smith right you know and, and words of men yeah words of men and it's funny because what happens is when people start reading those names when they get to martin luther a lot of times they'll say martin luther king jr and i'll say go back and read that again yeah not the same guy and the reason why is they're reading with the expectation that it's going to be there so martin luther king jr is a lot more ever present mm-hmm. figurehead to us right not that martin luther king jr didn't do great things right but but what happens is is we read sometimes with the intentions that i'm going to see something after that and so if we go into it with thinking okay i'm going to study patience or like this month leadership right you know, you can take the word lead, led, led, you know, leading, and you can take the look at the the way that all these different men and women throughout the context of your Bible led in their own ways. Well, you're going to have a very rich history because if That's you right. study, just if you're going to pick leader and you're going to pick Gideon, right? If you just say, I'm going to study leadership and I'm going to pick Gideon, you're, you're going to focus on exactly what Gideon did. Was Gideon a great leader? Sure. You know, I mean, he was a great leader, but but you're going to miss, you know, all the characteristics that each one of these men had in their leadership. And so you take leadership and you study that perspective on it. So there's just, there's so many blessings to do in a word study. You know, something else I think is a great way to approach Bible study is a, is a character study then. Yeah. Like you go back to Gideon, right? Mm-hmm. And so you look at Gideon's story, you know, all the judges, you know, some of them are like two verses long, right? You know, some of them we know nothing about really other than they were by, by and large just a judge. And, and you, you know, a lot of that is just because Israel, you know, it's, it's their history like we talked about before. And so when you get to like Gideon, you get to see like Gideon's character come out. You get to see Gideon's you know, when they want to make him a king, right? Now, Uncle Matt, you can't make me a king, but then they, then he'll make an ephod, and guess what happens? Yeah. You know, they end up worshiping the ephod, essentially. And so, you know, you get to take this character study, and so there's, a, there's this really balanced method to study in the Bible because what you're trying to do is build this this rich text that you've got throughout the, the, the annals of its pages 
to where you're putting together all these things in perspective. So when you read things like First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, all these things that chrono- that chrono- that chronologically follow Israel's history, and then you overlay them with the prophets, right? You see where Hezekiah. So you're going to go Second Kings 18, right? You got Hezekiah there, and then you're going to take and overlay Isaiah. With with Hezekiah, and right. so you know you can they're prophesying read, the same times. They're 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 working in the by and large on the same landscape, and so what it does is it provides a little bit more stability and helping you understand. And so if somebody didn't know kind of that rich history to start with, if if you're a, I mean it could be anybody nowadays, um, and that's the thing is like a lot of Christians today they're not they're not so they're not built in. You know, on their on their Bible, and that's you know that's part of what our our names about is is Chris and Bob, Christians built on Bible. We're kind of taking our names and and putting that in. Um, but but so you know, you look at those chronological Bibles. You know, those can be things that can you know they can help people to uh, you know as far as their their study and, and looking at you know to understand. Okay, who's prophesying at the same time as as this is going on? You know, in First and Second Kings, or, or what is uh, you know, what's going on? What Psalms were written whenever David was going through this part, and you know, in his life, and uh, and so those are those are good things. So what else? So, so if you were to, um, if somebody was, let's say they're a, a teenager and they're coming to you and they've never read the Bible before, where would you tell them to start? You know, interestingly enough, you know, because the whole Bible is about Jesus. The whole thing. So, Amen. Hundred like, percent. So, so you, you think about this, okay? Let's let's just turn over there. I want you to see something. You know, when Jesus is is teaching the Sermon on the Mount, right? What's mm-hmm. the golden rule? Yeah, doing others you'd have them doing to you. Where's that found? Right smack dab in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, right? So what you're going to have is when when the Lord is. Um, Trying to use my old Bible Are you here. You using Matthew? You, which sermon Mount you going to? Matthew. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use yeah yeah okay. I'm gonna use Matthews. All right. Right. So when when um, when the Lord is using this this kind of this um, this what we would say our golden rule, right? What He's doing is He's providing a commentary on the whole law, and so when the Lord is going to say whatsoever you would have men do to you, do you likewise unto men. For this is the law and the prophets. You know, what you when somebody asks you what is the what is the starting point that I can begin to read my Bible? Well, you know, the whole thing is about Jesus. The whole Bible yes. is about Jesus. So if you wanted to if and we're blessed with that, right? We're blessed with knowing that that the um the the how do you say like we're blessed with knowing now because we can look backwards we have this new testament that provides this commentary on the old testament so we can look backwards on this and realize that all this stuff was about jesus that's right well, so if i if i begin and i just understand to the best of my ability who this thing is who this whole bible is about then what it will do is it will provide for me a, a kind of platform Right, that I can go from reading the rest of my Bible. If I take it with the eye of that Jesus, that this thing is about God saving me, and He does it through His Son, who is His Son, right? So, what about you? What would you do? Well, just kind of to go on to uh, what, what you were talking about is uh, Psalm twenty. I mean, uh, Luke twenty four. Jesus is talking to, to those of the road on the Maus, and He says uh, in verse. 27 and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded to them and all the scriptures the things concerning himself and then later when he's talking to his his followers Luke 24 and uh, and 44 these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all things should be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and think about the first five books and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me and those things are you know about Jesus so it's all about Jesus so if somebody's never read the Bible I tell them to go to the book of John and uh, and to look at I just love the way that John expounds it but um, but for me like as far as studying the Bible I'll do a word studies I want to know why did you why did they say this you know 
okay, when David went down into the to the brook Kidron and he got those and he got those stones, you know, where was he at ge- geographically? You know, why was this a, a particular place? To think about like. Um, how, where's the? Explain to me how that benefits you. Well, for, for me, when I think about I think about warfare in the in the in the Bible, someone who was a I mean I was a, a you know police officer and a SWAT officer and I think about tactical situations and things like that and you know you, you you put David you know in in this in this situation and Goliath is going out every single day and he's cussing God's army every single morning. And every single evening for forty days, won't nobody step up. Right. But but I think about you know when you can really put this into into um, into this section in your life when you can think about whenever Jesus when he he crossed over when they go to the Mount of Olives after they sung that hymn when he's going over and he crosses over you think about whenever he's whenever he's walking to the Mount of Olives there's this. There's this trench that goes through, and what's flowing through is all that lamb's blood. And so you just think about these things and where where Jerusalem's at, and and so I just I love looking at. I want to know where they were at, what they were doing, what it was like, and um, and so I love digging into those intricate details of, of scripture. But and I think that it helps too as an evangelist to to bring that to life to people. Um, at least I, I feel like that it it helps me. Now when you but for me, I love studying, you know, word studies. I think the very first word study that I looked at, studying whole and hard, was on, was on lambs. I was studying the the Passover lamb in in Exodus. It's all about Jesus, and and looking at at how many lambs that that they that they would kill every year because of the Passover, and then looking at all the things that that with the Passover lamb to Christ, who's now our Passover, and just tying those things in together but I wanted to know how many lambs did they killed every single year and and looking at all those feasts and things and so to me that that was easier for me to to study um, but pointing all those Old Testament things and the tops and any tops uh, those are those are good things so let's move on what, what are uh, what are other ways and methods uh, that you would suggest to people so I'll tell you something that I've done in the past so let's just Take a step back, you know, because the problem is we're preachers and we talk a lot. That's right. And so at least you do. Hold, Anyways. That, hold that thought just a second. Yeah, so the problem is 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 we're preachers and we talk too long. But Yeah, and, go and ahead. but so what we've talked about so far is, you know, what's the best way to start, right? Yeah. If somebody needs to start, you know, studying their Bible, for like really digging in, right? So we talked about how you know that the Bible is based on Jesus, right? I mean, from the beginning to the end, the whole story. I mean, Genesis three is the first yeah. prophecy of the Christ, and and the last words are said by Jesus. That's right. Mm-hmm. And so you know, the whole thing is here. Matthew seven and verse twelve, right? The golden rule is is the the Jesus tells them that this is the law and the prophets, right? Whatever you'd have men do to you, do you likewise unto men. For this is the law and the prophets. See, we don't quote the rest of that. We usually just say, do good unto men and they'll do good to you. Yeah. But really what Jesus is saying is that the whole thing of this book, this this story that you're getting, this account that you're getting of my life, is because from the beginning I've been priming the pump because I'm going to die for you and you're going to have to die for me. And so then if you if you approach the Bible from that perspective, starting out, right, that that God has prepared a way to save man, and look at this grand story. Then, a lot of hurdles and challenges that we would normally have. For example, like why does Solomon have so many wives? Right? I got a guy called me on the phone. Just looked up the church's number and called me, wanted to know how come Solomon had so many wives. Well, because he did wrong. Mm-hmm. That's why. Yeah. It wasn't that God allowed him. It's just he did wrong. But if you approach the Bible from this perspective, that God has given us this storyline, this account, this historical account of how he brought the Christ into the world to save us, then it's going to change the way that you read it. Then you're going to see it from a little bit different perspective. So that's how you approach it. That's a way that you can approach it from the beginning. Here's something that I do still. What I do is, is when I read through my Bible every year, I sit down and... If there's something I don't understand, I just write it down. And I don't spend a lot of time on it. 
right? Because I, I fear uh, here's yeah, what happens. Just catalog it. Yeah, I, I, mm-hmm. and if I write Throw it away. down, it kind of gives validity to it in my mind. You know, like then I'll I'll think about it, right? Like I don't know if you do this or not, but I'm riding around and I'll think of a good sermon point and I'll think, remember that one. Yeah, and, then and I'll, I'll forget it. Yeah, by the time I made it, great you know. preachers here, folks. Great preachers. <laughs> exactly. It's like forgetful yeah. and long winded. <laughs> right. So, you know, I'll write it down. And and that way it kind of puts a bullet point by it. So mm-hmm. I'll, I'll I'll then I'll think about it, you know, like and so then as it kind of resonates in my mind, it'll it'll bubble up every once in a while when I'm reading something. And so, you know, when you get to all of a sudden you get the things like you're reading the gospels, then some of those genealogies, you know, that become not as important important to you when you're reading the Old Testament, all of a sudden you get to see some of the significance of it when you start looking at the lineage, when you're oh, tracing yeah. it through. Yeah, when somebody's saying, hey, Jesus, well, these prophets are saying he's going to come out of the tribe of Judah. Well, okay, well, Judah, you go back and he's, you know, one of the sons of Jacob, and you go back and you trace all that, and you realize, okay, well, these prophets, these these genealogies, we think, oh my goodness, I can't believe we're going to read through it, but then you realize, man, this was prophesied about right. that the Christ would come through the seed of this guy, this guy, this guy, and and finally, when then you see these people who were who were in it, and it's like these things were said hundreds of years before it ever happened. Then it's like, all right, I understand it now. But yes, reading through them, it's extra boring. And 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 that's internal, right? There, you know, and are we not blessed? to live in such an age where there's so much you know okay i'm just going to preface this and i don't mean to offend anybody by saying this but i tried using my ipad for a a period yeah it's hard for me too and here's what always happens right here's the problem that i have with my ipad and it's connected to everything else Mm -hmm. now now if i read my bible and it's connected to god Right, it's connected yeah. to God because mm-hmm. it's through His Word. That's how He talks to us, right? Second Timothy three sixteen, right? But the problem is my iPad is connected to everything else too. Yeah, and so I'm easily distracted. And so, ping, when my yeah. little message goes off or my little notification goes off or something like that, I have to tell myself, don't look at that. You're like the dog that comes that's getting ready to go out for his pee break his first morning, and then it's like, oh, squirrel, squirrel, yeah. then, you know, and gone. the squirrel's over here and gone, and he forgot yeah. what he was doing. But so you think about your, your iPad, it's connected to everything else and mm-hmm. God, right? Yeah. But your Bible, it's the only thing that you've got that's only connected to God. Sure. But... All that being said, we've got such a blessing in, in all our modern resources. Oh, yeah. I mean, Jessica, for Christmas, got me, AP has got a, the Apologetics Press. And and if you've never been Great there. Great resource. Go check them out. Yeah, check them out. I mean, they've just got page after page on Christian evidences yeah. and, and, you know, biblical text and, and all these different things that prove the Bible to be true on so many different platforms, not just from a historical context, not just from a scientific, but just in, in so many ways. Well, you know, she got me a Bible for Christmas that the AP put out that is an excellent resource to have because, you know, in this Bible, it's not a lot of commentary. Let, let me tell you something. I'm going to caution anybody out there that's using a commentary Bible because all those commentary Bibles are just slam full of false doctrine. Yeah, that's right. They've got so much stuff out there. Speaking of commentaries, uh, we just got a gift. Me and you both did. Um, and so in my office today, I literally got here, and on my desk was a New Testament commentary by Wayne Jackson. Now, Wayne's a good old guy, uh, one of our shepherds. Thanks, Brian, for this. One of our shepherds got this for it. Now, but here's the thing. Can, can Wayne be wrong? Absolutely. Yes. Now, does Wayne want to be wrong? No. Uh, Is he going to try to steer you right? Yes. Yes. But certainly we know that mankind in general, man can lie to you, one, purposefully, and two, unintentionally. And so, yes, anytime that you read something underneath on your Bible, whether it's on those commentaries, whatever, you, you better fact check them and, and read them and with some, a grain of salt. And certainly there's good things. Sometimes there's, there's absolute truth in there. But you do. you got, you got to be super careful. And, 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 it's, and it's because the problem is, is like we talked in the beginning, when we approach the word patience, right, we study the word patience with this with a preconceived idea of what patience is going to produce from me from the pages of the Bible. Well, most commentators approach the Bible from 
their sort of doctrinal stance on the overall theme of sure. the Bible. Mm-hmm. And, and that's that's scary because even if I if I approach it under my preconceived thoughts and notions, and then it's like I'm, it's going to change the way that I read the Bible. Yes, it change absolutely. the way I look at verses and mark them. Absolutely, and and the there, there's no doubt that those things are going to happen to us, right? There's no doubt that like I'm going to read my Bible and I'm going to I'm going to focus in and pull out certain things just because I've got certain things going on in my life. I'm mm-hmm. raising boys, sure, right? I mean, so that that certainly changes things as far as how I think about parenting and when I see the decisions that parents make in the Bible but you know I'm, I'm a, at the end of the day I still approach these things looking with an eye for seeing something and, and these guys like Wayne Jackson I mean like I, I have confidence mm-hmm. right I mean I've got I have great confidence in Wayne as, as a commentator yeah. so it's mm-hmm. not that I, I but still right it's it's if, if you look at this book right here it's got his name on it that's right right mm-hmm. this one right here Hey, and here's the thing too. Notice this. It says, "Well, how do you do this?" It says third edition. You know? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, right. And so, man, you look at the Constitution of the United States, best document written for for any kind of country whatsoever. Period. How many times have been amended? Yeah. And so, some it was flawed. Mm-hmm. And so, God's word is not flawed, but certainly, man, uh, you know, mankind's flawed. What's hard for me now? Listen, I use my phone or a device all the time, and I use. Like to, to look up words or to look up those things. I certainly I'll use Google to uh, to to help me out, not to find a scripture necessarily. I have done that before, but to because uh, sometimes I'm like, man, where's that scripture at? And I and I remember, you know, uh, phrase, right, yeah. rightly dividing, you right. know, or mm-hmm. whatever it might be. Um, or uh, you look up, you know, scripture and truth. Look up those two words together, and I love comparing those things together for sermons, for mm-hmm. classes, as well as my own study. But but in in basic studies with people, you know it's it's a great tool. But what's hard for me to sit down and read the Bible on an electronic term is I love to make notes. And so whenever, for instance, like here's I just turned to Second Corinthians six six, and so I've got these circled notes and all that good stuff. That and and what it does, I'm a visual learner. And I remember where things are in my Bible from where I saw them out on the page. Yes, me too. And and that's hard with a, you know, a scroll by a little page. That's right. It's so difficult for me. Yeah, because then it it just doesn't have, like, you know, and I think most people do that. They'll remember what it looks like on their page. Right? Is it on the left side, the right side, or something like that? it may not for some people. Yeah, but but I just, either way, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is there's a lot of online resources and a lot of the, a lot of stuff the brethren have put out there that are really good and sound and solid things to use. That's right. And so we're thankful that we live in a... There's there's so many, and it's not just typed. It's There's so many digital resources, video resources. I mean, the uh, John Moore's got these Bible land passages, and we love watching these things at my house. And they'll go through, and he'll go, and he'll take the hill of Megiddo. And he'll go through and he'll dissect what happened there. He'll take, he'll take Jerusalem, like you were talking about a while ago, and he'll dissect the city... Right, he'll look at the city, and he'll take the city, and he'll show how it's strategic from a war standpoint. Why it was such a yeah, that's right, mm-hmm. a good city to have, you know, as far as a, a military hold. And so, you know, there's so many online resources that you can do, but ultimately those things are supplemental. That's right. Period. All those things are supplemental. You know, and and um, if if you ladies and guys out there that have your own ideas, we want you to share it and 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 like them and and please put them out put them out there. You know, make a video and add it in the comment line on our Facebook page because we would love to be able to kind of uh, see what other methods people are doing and using out there. Because I know there's a lot of ladies and I saw Morgan posted in um, our KW families page that we made of some bible markings that she was doing and yeah and that's that's really been a big hit the last few years with a lot of people yeah and i sit beside um renee and jay in the in the normal assembly which man i sure am missing yeah, and you right. know i get to look over at them and watch them you see renee's like five different colors yeah color exactly. codes her bible. right exactly right and so like she needs like well like a a six shooter like she can just <laughs> pull the trigger and like it'll switch it around for her yeah, or something it's real cool so like yeah certain colors we might have her own renee we might have you on here sometime to help us with bible marking but 
Yeah, they, it's certain colors are like prophecy. Certain colors are like the words of Jesus. Certain colors are like you know different different things that it that it might be, uh, and where they portray you know out in different places. And so it's like, oh well, that I know that, that has to do with with this, but also the thing with Bible marking. And this is something that I r- would really like for somebody to to do. But you know, like sometimes, like I can't go into prison right now to teach. But how awesome would it be if we had Bibles that were pre-marked? Oh yeah. For for people who've never read the Bible before, mm-hmm. and they can just look in their front page and go and find scriptures on faith, scriptures on salvation, you know. And so the scripture salvation it takes you to the to the first place, you know. And, and you mean so, not not a not a uh, concordance type, but. No, it, it say you just have in the front cover of the Bible it has the word salvation, mm-hmm. and it says turn to page three sixty five because mm-hmm. it's not going to tell you to turn to John three sixteen. I think that the World Video Bible School has one that's put out like that. That's cool. I, I think that there's one that they use for a a study method. I, if I'm not mistaken, I think Clint Heathcock had one that I was looking at one time. That's if cool. it's you, Clint. Yeah, chime post in a and, link on here. Yeah, chime in and let us know. And that's the and that's the thing. It, but even for you studying your Bible for people, it's if if you say, all right, I want to I want to study salvation, and you write these scriptures down. Well, and but yet you're in a you go okay, these things they they hit me all of a sudden. And somebody wants to to know where this is found out in the Bible, you know. And and so we think about salvation. Well, where would I take somebody to study with? Well, well when you. When you get caught up in those moments, if you don't have that sheet of paper you wrote it down on, or you, or your device failed, or phone, or EMP, or whatever might happen these days, <laughs> then you go to your Bible marking and see salvation. Take me to page this page, and then next scripture. You know, go to and if you're good in your Bible, then you can you can actually say, you know, go to John three sixteen, go to uh, you know Romans ten seventeen. All scripture given by the inspiration of God, or whatever it might be, wherever you would take somebody to. Or validity of God's word, prophecies of Christ. You know, it might be different things, or just truth. Or what about wisdom? Or you might have a Bible marking on, um, you know, what about whenever you're down, when you're struggling? I know there's a lot of people who be that way. So there's certainly all kinds of ways to to approach, you know, looking at the Bible. And and there's so many resources. One resource that I use, and I'll I'll try to put a link in the description is. Uh, blue letter bible i use that thing every single probably every single day of my life yeah and it's just such a great resource because it you know there's a do you have to read greek to go to heaven no No, and i sure am glad but you know at the end of the day there's just such a benefit in understanding things on a very foundational level you know because you know jessica and i were doing a word study the other night and we caught a really interesting um uh sort of um translation error i don't want to say error you know like it was malicious intent mm-hmm, right but uh we found something really interesting in our study the other night and and, and i'm going to hold back on that one because that'll be a good sermon maybe <laughs> but okay. they uh, no i mean it's just really the the you really get the it seasons the way that you see something sometimes you know when you get to see it from you know what does this word mean as a definition sure and then sometimes I don't understand what that word means, and so then I can go use those, use the context, and to say how many times this Greek word is used throughout the New Testament. Well, it might be used uh, in, in this form one way, but it might be used totally different in an, in another way and be a different word phrase. And so it helps me to understand truly what that word meant. Um, and then, you know, I think of one that that really helped me in knowing the Greek was on uh, the wheat and the tares. And and I think you taught me on this one was that uh, you know oh, the, the darnel the wheat. Darn wheat yeah and the fact that it's I mean it's poison make you sick right. I already preached it here at KW so I'm sorry <laughs> man but yeah. Uh, but yeah it's uh you you go look that up because I always thought well well you'll be able to tell the difference between a big weed in a field I mean when I was a, a boy in in a junior high school middle school you guys today. It was uh I worked for this farmer who uh they they for if you ate at Cracker Barrel, you know, this white corn was they they would send it they grow it all through middle Tennessee and it's sent to all the cracker barrels. And well what was happening is they had these uh these I guess they're mul not mulberries, but they were these purple 
shoots that would stick thistles up. Thistles like? Yeah, they, but they weren't thistles, but they would they grow little uh, purple berries on them. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah. anyway, so they were growing all up through the cornfield, and these had all kinds of them. Well, they paid us to literally, each one of us would, would be responsible for five rows. And we'd start on the end of this 40-acre field and walk through, and we would machete them down. When we get down, there's like, you know, 10 of us, so we'd move over 50 rows mm-hmm. and, and then come back across the field. Because it was dying all of their all of their corn purple. No wasn't anything wrong with it, but it's the way it looks. So we could easily identify the difference between the two and that's the way I always thought from that scripture. But the looking at darnel wheat, you know, that's the that's the tear versus the wheat. I mean, you when you really look at those pictures, you can't you can't no. tell the difference. Yeah, I mean it's easily deceptive. Easily deceptive. And that's what Satan wants to do. He wants to deceive us and and he wants you to not read your Bible. That's right. He don't want you to go to heaven. He don't want you to know the truth. Um, so uh, we want we want to be one of those resources that Chris talked about. That you talked about, Chris. You know, the Chris and Bob show. We don't. It's not about us, y'all. Uh, it, it is us talking, but it's not about us. It's all about Christ and, and the Word, and that's what we want it to be. And we want it to be about you. And but we want this to be a, a pathway to, to help other people to, to grow their spiritual lives, to, to help fortify their faith and to be secured and, and to, to, to hopefully learn. And so we want we want this show to be an avenue for people to this podcast for, for people to, to be better Christians or ultimately become a Christian. And uh, so we want your help to get word out. So we if you would, you know, like and like and subscribe if if you like details like this hope that you'll like and sub- subscribe to our channel and hit that notification button and we're all new to all this stuff so i may be telling you stuff that i don't even know how to do and 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 also you know if if you guys the the blessing about being a christian and and like being able to work with you bob is that you know one of the things i really think is awesome is that there's nothing that's off the table that's right you know, I mean, if God said it, that settles it, right? That's so, right. Amen. so there's no, there's no bad stuff in the Bible that we're not willing to talk about. There's no, like, there's sometimes there's subjects that we don't need to be discussed in certain years. I get it, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. But you know, if if anybody's got a topic, you know, if they want got something they want to discuss, you know, we'd love to tackle it. We'd love to look at it and see. So, you know, if you you know post a so post a a, a comment or send one of us a text message or something like that and let us know, hey. We'd like to do it. And also, we appreciate any kind of feedback we can get, yes. too. Absolutely. Well, hopefully this uh, this podcast helped you out some. We want uh, your tips and, and things that you can give to us about we just want to be better all the time. We All we know to do right now is just to talk. And, uh, and so thanks for being patient with us. This is uh, podcast number two. And we're just uh, we're thankful that, that you joined in with us today. Hope you have a great day.